It is 5.22 and I will call the third special common council meeting to order. Will the clerk please call the roll? Will the clerk please call the roll? Alderperson Ackley. Here. Alderperson Decker. Here. Alderperson Feldy. Here. Alderperson Felicki Paneski. Here. Alderperson Heideman. Here. Alderperson Mitchell. Here. Alderperson Perella. Here. Alderperson Ramey. Here. Alderperson Rust. Here. Alderperson Salazar. Here. There are 10 present. All right, thank you. For those in attendance, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. First, we'll start with public forum. Will the clerk please call the first person? Russ Otten. And then Russ, just please state your name and your address. Okay. Uh, my name is Russ Otten, 2522 South 7th Street in Sheboygan. And you'll have five minutes. Thank you. Is there a clock I'm watching? Uh, no, I can give you a minute. <laughs> you want okay. me to give you a... Okay. First of all, thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. Um, on June 22 of 2020, the Common Council voted 9 nothing to hire Todd Wolf, City Administrator. The Common Council members included Mary Lynn Donahue, President, Ryan Sorensen, Dean Decker, Betty Ackley, and also Barbara Feldy. On November 7, Two years, two months later, the Common Council voted eight to two to put Todd Wolf on leave to begin an investigation with no goal, parameters, or timeline. The Common Council members voting for this included Betty Ackley, Dean Decker, Barbara Feldy. January 6, this past Friday, the Common Council created a resolution to fire Todd Wolf without cause was authored by Roberta Felicki Paneski and Barbara Feldy. Common Council members supporting it include Betty Ackley, Dean Decker, Barbara Feldy. My key question is this Betty, Dean, Barbara, what did Todd Wolf do that was so egregious to have you vote for his firing tonight? I know you don't have to answer that question but I want that to go on the record. What is it that he did? Number two, Betty, Dean, Barbara, you ran an investigation that showed nothing that would warrant his firing, yet you are firing without cause. It can't be his management style because you knew that when you hired him. It can't be for physical, or for, I'm sorry, for fiscal irresponsibility because he has saved millions of dollars for this community. It can't be for ethical lapses, because you knew his ethics from being on the Common Council with you and even elected him Common Council President at one point. So why do you want to fire him? Your resolution, Betty, Dean, and Barbara, states that firing without cause is quote unquote, more effective, more cost effective and would minimize the negative impact on both Wolf and other city employees. I think this should be rephrased to read, after our extensive two month investigation, we cannot fire Todd Wolf for cause. He has done nothing that rises even close to for cause. However, we, eight common council members still want to fire him because we don't like the way he stood up to the demands of a far left group that represents about 10% of all Sheboygan residents. Tonight, right now, I am asking each of you, each of you, all 10, to think for just a few moments about how you're gonna vote. What statement will this make about our community? What is truly honorable? What is the right thing to do? 
Be driven by your love of our community, not slaves to an agenda. Be driven by your love for all people, not a vindictiveness toward those with whom you disagree. And I close with this. Christ taught us to love even those who oppose us. I love each of you. I really do. And I don't even know half of you. But I love you. And it doesn't matter what you stand for. I still love you. And I'm hoping that love tonight will be enough for you to change your minds. Thank you. John Dolson. John, if you could please state your name and address. Yes, sir. John Dolson, 409 New York Avenue in the city of Sheboygan. Hi. Good evening. Appreciate your opportunity, or my opportunity, to speak to you tonight. When residents in the city vote for common council men and women to represent us in city government, it is exactly that, to represent us, not personal interests or agendas. You're our vote in making decisions and being transparent at the local level. <clears throat> Obviously, we can't all be at the table with a vote in committee and council meetings. One major decision you made recently that seemed to bode well with residents, and after your apparently extensive interview process, was to hire Mr. Wolf as city administrator. In addition to many job duties you hired him to fulfill, one major item was to carry out the task of basically being the fiduciary of each of us collectively and to develop a fiscally responsible budget to wisely spend our taxes. Budgeting with often limited resources, especially from the state and seemingly never ending needs is an arduous task. Working in county government, I'm more than familiar with local government budgets. Mr. Wolf, most likely along with input from department heads, developed a budget for city spending that unfortunately had to leave many items off, off the budget, as so often is the cause, or the case. Spending our tax dollars on non-tangible items, such as studies, may not be as important for all residents when resources are limited. Sheboygan residents want a safe community with supported police and fire departments, Decent streets, clean and maintained park shelters, sufficient garbage collection, plowed streets in the winter, etc. Generally, what a city should provide. One item that did not make the annual budget seems to be this study and appears now to be the reason some in the council would like to let Mr. Wolf go. Though officially it's proposed to let him go for, quote, without cause, unquote, when anyone could easily surmise that there is, in fact, a cause. If that's not the case, why on earth would we all be here tonight? It begs one to question why someone on the council would be desiring this proposed resolution when the council just recently hired Mr. Wolf. Is he not fulfilling what the council hired him to do? I would say he is. Or did someone on the council not get their wish or agenda item included in the budget? Please enlighten us. The process you're going through is not proper. If there are underlying issues with Mr. Wolf's job performance or other areas of city government, then simply state that. It is not your job, it is your job, I'm sorry, it is your job as council men and women to let us know. It's the whole reason residents voted for you, to represent us and to be transparent. What's going on tonight is wrong with this proposed resolution. It is the exact opposite. Please do not pass this resolution tonight. Thank you for your time. Aaron Gunther. Aaron Gunther. And Aaron, if you could state your name and address, please. Aaron Ginther, <clears throat> 2049 White Pine Lane, Sheboygan. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. President, members of the council, I have no idea whether to make a statement in support of Todd Wolf or against him. 
Wisconsin Statutes 1981, Chapter 1 states, it is declared to be the policy of this state that the public is entitled to the fullest and most complete information regarding the affairs of government. And in Chapter 2, all meetings of all state and local governmental bodies shall be publicly held. Wisconsin 1985 C provides a personnel matter as a reason to go into closed session. It does not specifically provide confidential privilege here statutorily. It is only implied. Furthermore, what is clear by case law, if Todd Wolf has waived his confidentiality regarding defamation, then there is no privilege for a personnel matter. And he has, by making a statement publicly that he is a target of a political witch hunt. He would also provide you a waiver today, tonight, to make this closed session notes public. We demand to know what happened. Did Todd Wolf steal money? Did he abuse a child? Was he accused of sexual assault at the office? Is he a target of a witch hunt? The council has said nothing except that there was an investigation and you want to remove him and not for cause as a result of this investigation. That sounds to me like you are exposing this city, my tax dollars, me, to a lawsuit that he will win. First, I demand that you hold your vote to remove Todd Wolf until the, after the public can give you their opinion on the matter. Second, I demand that you release the investigation with or without his consent to the public because we deserve to know. Third, I demand you lift any alleged privilege and let the council and the target speak about what has happened. Tyranny is born in the dark. I fear oppressive government. You are an embarrassment to this city. You know it and I know it and you know better. Now I have with me here, Here is a legal request for what I just stated on the record. Thank you. Mike Vandersteen. All right, Mike, you know the drill. Name and address. Well, it's a little different being on this side of the desk. But um, good evening, everyone. Appreciate everything uh, that's been said prior to me. Um, Mike Vandersteen, 3816 High Cliff Court. Over two months ago, the council leadership came and asked you to suspend Administrator Wolf. At this closed meeting, I assume that they outlined some alleged transgressions that convinced the majority of the council to fur that further investigation was necessary. An attorney was then hired to conduct an investigation which included compelling staff to participate. Because the document that is on the agenda tonight to dismiss Administrator Wolf without cause, this leads me to understand, and all, I think everybody else in the room, uh, that this did not find any problems with the city administrator's conduct. I worked extensively with Todd Wolf as a committee appointee, an alder person, council president, and administrator. During this 10-year time frame, I found him to be very dedicated to serving the residents of Sheboygan as administrator. He has worked transparently and diligently to create synergy within our departments and improve services that would uh, provide efficiency and many cost savings. During his tenure, Administrator Wolf, Administrator Wolf has had many notable accomplishments, including the implementation of the Carlson Detman's compensation study, the Tyler Munis. Uh, city software update and more staff training, the city property re, uh, appraisal plan, the bonding plan to uh, fund capital projects and maintain uh, Moody's AA2 bond rating for the city, the uptown social building project, implementa implementation of the CLA recommendations in the finance and, and uh, HR departments, and he completed the uh, city's first five-year fiscal plan. He's arranged for the purchase of new equipment, including infrastructure like the fire pumper truck, the Southside sewer project, 10 new buses, uh, enterprise fleet management program. He's worked to uh, um, uh, update the employee handbook and uh, implement the My Civic electronic community information and engagement program, just to name a few. 
to dismiss Administrator Wolf without cause will be an expensive payment for the taxpayers that will exceed $200,000. It will not be fair to Todd, who has been a dedicated employee, and it sends a negative message to current employees that may, um, and may make it more difficult to retain and hire staff in the future. Our residents are also concerned about why and, and, and really want to understand this, why this dismissal is being proposed. I believe and hope that you will reject this proposal proposed by council leadership to dismiss Administrator Wolf without cause and allow him to continue his role as administrator. I know because of the emotions involved in this matter, it will not be an easy process. But I believe if everyone really sets what's best for the city as their priority, would this will allow everyone to overcome these differences? When administrator role was approved by the council, the, the practice was uh, started to have weekly meetings between the mayor, the council president and vice president, and the administrator to discuss and see reports on the work plan uh, that was going on in his office. I understand that these meetings are continued on Thursdays every week and they're the place where the administrator should be receiving direction from the council leadership. I've talked to Todd and know that he is committed to resuming his role as administrator if you give him the opportunity. He would welcome the opportunity to regain the confidence of the city council. And some people may be wondering why Todd isn't here tonight. Uh, he's still under orders by this council not to set foot in any city building or talk to any city staff. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. Tracy Burnett. And Tracy, if you could say your name and address, please. Thank you. Sure. My name is Tracy Brunette, and I live at 1229 North 4th Street in the city of Sheboygan. Thank you. Good evening. I'd like to start by thanking the council for their tireless work on behalf of our beautiful city. I was born and raised in Sheboygan, and I care deeply about its future. I wasn't going to come tonight because the social media and the news outlets portrayed this as a meeting as a showdown, which made me think that the focus would be on drama instead of the facts. But then I thought about how there are so many people, just like me, who are not interested in the drama, perhaps the chaos, and that care deeply about our city too. They know this is a tough decision, but that is why we elected you, to search for facts and then make the right decision for our city, no matter how difficult or controversial it may be. There is not a single person in this audience tonight that has the information and facts that each of you on the council has. And because this is a serious personnel matter, it would not be right for you to share it. Instead, our expectation is that you do proper due diligence and legal investigation, which in this case is now completed, to uncover the facts so that an informed decision can be made. That time is now. My message to you is that you separate the emotion here tonight from the facts you have discovered through your due diligence. It is why we elected you. We trust that you will make the best decision for our city, and we are behind you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. That concludes public forum for the evening. Next is item number four, resolution number 120-22-23 by Alders Feldy and Flicky Paneski terminating Todd Wolf as city administrator pursuant to paragraph 12A of his employment agreement with the city and authorizing the payment of severance pursuant to paragraph 13 of said employment agreement. Alder Feldy. I move to suspend the rules. Second. There's been a motion. Any objection to suspension? Seeing none, please proceed with your motion. I move to adopt the resolution. Second. There's been a motion and second. Any discussion? Alder Heideman. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I've had a couple of uh, motions that I'd like to make, and I don't really know which one to make. And will I have the opportunity to make both motions? That's going to be a city attorney question. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm waiting for the answer. Well, you can, there is a motion on the floor, so you could certainly make a motion to amend. 
Th thank you very much. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a motion to amend this document. And I'd like to amend the resolution to change the word from terminating to written warning. Also to change all language that has to do with severance and anything with termination. How an article in the Sheboygan Press can achieve this result is mind blowing. The, the truth has to come out. The investigation was far from conclusive. Please take this opportunity to change your minds. Surely we do not want to be wrong about this. Second. There's a motion and second. I'm city attorney. So uh, could you could you state the motion so that so that we know exactly what is going to okay. be being voted on? M move to uh, amend the resolution to remove all wor all wording that has to do with termination and put written warning. I think you said also something else beyond that. Well, and anything else that's I mean I read the resolution. It's got a lot of other documentation or uh, language in there about how he gets his severance and everything else. Uh, basically, what I'm asking is if uh, we can just rewrite this resolution to include a, a written warning as opposed to termination. Well, that's that's why you make the motion to rewrite that, and so that's what I'm asking you to do. Well, we'd have to, yeah, we'd have to have it rewritten and voted on. Yes. Right, and the way you do that is by making a motion to amend. You've you've made a motion that includes replacing the word terminate with written warning, uh, and then. You need to indicate what you want what you want to remove, and you need to be specific. So, if you want to remove paragraphs, if you want to remove lines, you need to be ex specific so that we know exactly how it will read once you're done. Okay. All right. Thank you, Attorney. Okay. In uh, paragraph one, eliminate terminating Todd Wolf to giving to, to giving him a written warning. Okay. So, so we're we're changing specific language. So. What you, you can't just sort of like say, I want to change the meaning of this. Um, you, you, you have to use particular language to do it. I would note that um, the, the chair, meaning the mayor, may want to wish, uh, may wish to rule on whether this is a germane motion, uh, because you also, when you make a, an amendment to a motion, uh, the purpose of an amendment is to amend, not to completely change the document. Thank you, Attorney. Okay, you're making it more difficult for me to do something that I want to do. And I think everybody on this council understands what I want to do. Okay, so it sounds so, like. So do, do, me a, do me a favor, okay? You know what has to be eliminated. I'm not, a, I'm not an attorney. I'm a citizen of Sheboygan. I represent the 10th district. And I want something different in this uh, resolution other than terminating. Okay. So what you would need to do in this case, because you're completely changing this, and the mayor hasn't ruled on whether it's germane or not, but realistically the way you would do what you want to do is to vote against this and then, and then make another motion. Okay, and I ask you if I had a motion where I wanted to file the document. You, can, you could do that as well. Would that be a simpler way of doing it? It would be, you'd have, to, you'd have to vote down the motion that's before you because that takes precedence. A motion that's been made takes precedence over a motion to file. But then, then once you voted it down, you could then make a motion to file the document. So how do I, how do I get this to a vote, Chuck? What, what is it that you would like to get to a vote? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to the, uh, and, and, and I understand I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, you're going to have to speak up, please. Okay. I can't hear you. Okay, I'm going, to re I'm going to make the motion to file this document. You, you already made a motion. You'd have to withdraw your, your amendment. Okay. I don't know which one's going to work, Mayor. Okay, I, I can't do them both. So process takes place one item at a time. That's, okay. that's how process works, as you know, as you've been an alderman a long time. So mm -hmm. you have a document in front of you. You can vote it down or you can amend it. Because it appears that what you're trying to do is not to amend it but to completely change it, you can vote it down. And then after that, you would certainly have the ability to make a motion to file 
so that it goes away. Because merely defeating this isn't necessarily going to make it go away, because it, it, is a, it does require a supermajority. Or you could make some other motion at that point, like to, to um, uh, give the, the administrator a written warning or something like that. Okay. Um, got me in a tough spot here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the, redact the motion to take termination and make it written warning. And then I'm just going to make a motion to file the document. Okay, so you so I'm I'm helping the clerk here. You've withdrawn your motion to amend, correct? Okay, and you're asking to make a motion to file the document. Yes. Okay. Is there a second? Well, it, it's not it's not a motion that's that's in order because there's already been a motion made and seconded okay. to adopt it. So, at this point, his motion is not in order, but it may become in order at some point. Okay. So, Elder Heideman, you've withdrawn your amendment. Any other? You still have the floor. Okay, okay, so again, so that means I can make the motion to file the document again? So you've made a motion to file the document. I haven't heard the, the mayor rule it out of order. It is out of order, but the mayor has to make that decision, not me. Well, based on counsel, it's out of order. So now that you've heard that it's out of order, there can be an objection to the, to the, no. to the uh, chair's ruling from another alder. Not hearing that, then what will happen is then they'll continue discussion on the motion that is currently in front of you, and then if, if you're successful in defeating that motion, then you can make another motion at that point. So, um, I'm out of order, and the, the motion to uh, file is not good. You're not going to go along with that, uh, even if I have a second? The, the motion to file is not germane at the moment because it does not take precedence over the motion that's been made, which is to, uh, to, to pass, to approve. Now, you can vote that down. You have every right to vote that item down. And if you vote it down, then you can make a motion to file, which is what you want to do. Okay. Well, I, again, I, I've never was an attorney. I am an alderman. And I know this resolution is wrong. So in some way, somehow, <laughs> somehow, somehow, some way, we've got to do a better job than this resolution. It's our responsibility. And again, I'm, uh, I don't have the uh, techno uh, technical jargon or how to go through this to get something done that I want to get done, other than the fact that passing this tonight would be a big mistake. And I thought by just, just saying written warning, because I've heard that before. You've all heard that before. But that's not where the council went. They went to dismiss. So, again, I guess I'm at a loss of how to make the motion. If somebody else could make that motion for me, that uh, that would be fine. All right. Thank you, Alder Hardeman. Alder Decker. Thank you, Mayor. Um, first of all, I want to make this statement that's it has been stated by many that this is political. I can assure you it from my perspective, my personal perspective, I don't know everybody else on the, their feelings, but this is my perspective. It is in no way, shape or form political. Okay, I'm sorry. Please let the elder speak. After concerns were brought forward, we had several meetings in closed session, as you all know. And at the beginning of November, majority of the council decided to hire an independent investigator. That, if it, that investigation has concluded. After this, we held discussions uh, on our options and a majority of the council felt the resolution before us was the best option. I personally, after hearing the synopsis of that investigation, after hearing that synopsis, 
and weighing the options before us, have come to the conclusion that this is in the best interest of our employees. I know this isn't popular, and therefore the city itself To take care of our employees is important to us. I know this is one employee doesn't stand over all the rest of our employees. To put our employees through something like this is not right. So that is why I support this. Thank you. Thank you, Alder Decker. Alder Mitchell? Thank you, Mayor. I will keep my comments brief tonight because most of what I would like to cover I am not able to uh, discuss. But I do think it's important to focus on, or I guess reflect on, the fact that there can be a difference between what is legally permissible and what is just from a moral perspective. And I, I have a hard time understanding how tonight's proposed action can satisfy the latter. I will not be proposed, or supporting the resolution due to this. From my perspective, Administrator Wolf has been a dedicated civil servant who truly cares about this city. This has been evident to me in my interactions with him, uh, first during his time as council president, and more recently through his tenure as city administrator up until now. In that short period of time, Todd's brought numerous ideas to the table that have uh, greatly improved the city's capacity to serve its citizens. The organization is better off having had him, and as such, termination without cause is something I simply cannot support right now. And to try to help out on Alder Heidemann's motion. I believe a motion to postpone indefinitely would be a subsidiary and germane at the moment, correct? It would be. And then I will make such a motion. Is there a second? Second to postpone indefinitely. There's been a motion and second to postpone that indefinitely. That does take priority and so it, it does go immediately to a vote. There is no discussion. No discussion. All right. All those in favor to postpone indefinitely, please state aye. 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 Any objection to postponing? State nay. 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 All right. And opinion of the chairs, the nays have it. Who seconded that motion? Tra uh, Tra Tra we're back on. We're back on the main motion. Any other discussion on the main motion? Members of the audience don't get to dictate a roll call vote. Back on the main motion. Anyone wishing to speak? He's not queued in on the machine. Anyone else wishing to speak? Alder Mitchell. I put my oh, hand up. I can't queue in twice. Uh, Mayor, I would request that we take a verbal roll call vote on the main question. Thank you. There's been a, mo a request to take a roll call vote um, on postponing indefinitely. If you're in favor of postponing, please state aye. We'll start with Alder Feldy. Nay. Flicky Paneski. Nay. Salazar. Nay. Ackley. Nay. Ramey? Nay. Uh, Decker? Nay. Grazia? Varela? Aye. Rust? Nay. Mitchell? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. All right. The nays have it. We're back on the main motion. Anyone else wishing to speak? Anyone else wishing to speak? Seeing none, this is a muni code vote. Please refer to your muni codes. And Alder Perella? Alder Perella, this is a voting opportunity, so... Yes, thank you. And that is a yay. Hi, from Grazia. Eight eyes, two no's. All right, that motion is approved. Alder Feldy, is there a motion to adjourn? Yes, I move to adopt the resolution. Nope, we're no. motion to oh, adjourn. Sorry, I make motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor of adjourning, please state aye. Aye. Any objection? We're adjourned at 5.56. Thanks, everybody. Elections are coming. Elections are coming. Thank you, Gracias.